am Cupid and welcome back to five more tips for new Final Fantasy players. If you haven't seen my first video, I will link that down below, but for now let's just get right into it. So the first expansion, Heaven's Ward, brings you flying. After completing a few quests, you will complete one called Divine Intervention. Completing this quest gives you your first mount, the Black Chocobo, but you can't use it yet. It also gives you an Aether Compass. With this, you can start hunting down these green floating orbs called Aether Currents. Anytime you come across one of these, make sure to click it, unlike me, who ran past them for the first two zones. Clicking on your Aether Compass will show you the closest one, so when you're out questing, just put it on your hotbar and tap it every now and again. This will show you if one is nearby. You could also just not do that and get a friend to fly you around to all of them at once. This can be a lot faster. <laughs> Either way, you probably want to use a website called Heavensware, which shows you the location of all the Aether Currents in each zone and this works for all the expansions. You can track your progress on these by clicking travel and then Aether Current. The green marks are the ones we just talked about and the orange marks are quest objectives. Some of the quest objectives are just the main scenario, so do that and you'll unlock it eventually. The others are blue quests, so just check the blue quests you come across and look for an Aether Current symbol on the quest reward. So, roulettes. Roulettes are essentially daily scenarios that you queue into to get big chunks of XP. There are many different types of roulettes though, and not all of them are worth it. So here are some important ones for new players. So, the Guild Hess Roulette. After completing one guild levee from a levee master, you can talk to a battle warden in your starting city and complete the quest, simply the Hest. This allows you to complete guild hests, which are essentially mini encounters with bosses or dungeons. Once you have unlocked the first two guild hests, basic training enemy parties, and under the armor, you're able to queue for the guild hest roulette. These are not worth it to do daily, but they are still helpful and I will explain that later. So the next is the leveling roulette. After completing the level 15 dungeon Sestasha and the level 16 dungeon Tamtara Deepcroft, you will have unlocked the leveling duty roulette. This allows you to complete light dungeons or light trials that you have unlocked. Light meaning one tank, one healer, and two DPS. This duty roulette is very worth it because the XP scales to your level even if you are doing a level 16 dungeon. So next, the trials. So after unlocking two trials at level 50, you are able to queue for the trial duty roulette. Trials allow you to fight a singular boss as a full party, which is two tanks, two healers, and four DPS. The XP is pretty good, and generally the scenarios are really fast because it's just one boss, so I say it's worth it. So the 50, 60, 70 dungeons is essentially the same as the leveling roulette, but for 50, 60, 70 dungeons instead. You also need to have unlocked at least two level 50 dungeons. The XP is decent, it's not as good as the leveling or trials, but I still do it every day. So, the main scenario, roulette. At level 50 you'll be forced to do two like crazy long scenarios that take forever because of unskippable cutscenes. Probably don't do it, but then again, the XP is really good, so it's up to you. And then there's the Alliance Raids. This is the final important one for new players. Once you have completed two level 50 Alliance Raid quest chains, you can queue for some Alliance Raids. This requires an Alliance Party, which is a 24 man. This is three tanks, six healers, and 15 DPS. This is really good XP, so I do recommend it. So it should be noted that a lot of the optional or not optional dungeons and trials and alliance raids are unlocked from blue feature quests. And you can see how to unlock these and the quest chains and like the requirements behind them on the Final Fantasy wiki. You also get bonus XP from completing the Alliance in Need role. So if they need a healer and you queue as a healer, it's really good for some bonus XP, but this only works if you're queuing solo and not with a party. So the next is challenge logs, which can be easily missed, but they are very important because they do give a lot of XP each week. 
After completing the level 15 quest, Call of the Sea in your starting zone, a another level 15 quest, Rising to the Challenge, will become available. Completing this quest unlocks the challenge log. So there are a lot of challenges in the challenge log. The most important are the top five in the battle section. The first two are pretty self-explanatory. They should just be done if you are doing your duty roulettes every day. Now the complete guild has one relates back to what I said before. You basically want to queue the Under the Armor guild vest. 10 times in a row. It is a very quick and easy boss fight and you can just do it 10 times really quickly and you can swap when you are gonna get the XP onto like your main and just go like a healer or a tank ult so you can get those really quick cues and it's even faster. So the player commendation one is really easy. At the end of each duty, a player commendation thing will come up and you just wanna commend someone every time and you'll complete it really quickly each week without even thinking about it. So the fates are really similar. I just go around to low level fates and smash them out really quickly on my dancer because they are very OP at low levels. And then I just swap to like whatever I actually want the XP on. And it is the same thing for the Love A Quest one. Um, you do have to do five unique ones, but for the 20, you can just spam the same ones over and over again. I recommend these three from Mordana. Turnabout's Fair Play, Big Bad Idea, and Put Your Stomp On It. They're very quick and easy, and I just overlevel them so hard, so the longest part is really just running back and forth. So the gold saucer, it doesn't give XP, but I do it because it's just so easy. Every time you do a challenge log, you get a chance to have a new recruit in your squadron and your grand company. So you unlock the golden saucer from the level 15 quest, it could happen to you. I just do the crystal tower striker mini game 10 times in a row and it's done in like one minute. So for gear, I have a few tips relating to gear. Firstly, instead of accepting the gear from quests, I just take the cash reward and then I use that to go to the market board at different points and buy a full, like, perfect set of gear instead of just minor upgrades each time. You can buy the quest climbers that you missed anyway from a calamity salvager later, so there's no real reason to worry. Uh, for vanilla, I would just do every 10 to 20 levels, have a look at the market board and buy any big upgrades that are available. I sort by my best stat and just check the price of the first few items. Um, I generally don't buy gear that's more than 10k for a leveling character because you're just going to replace it anyway. At level 50, you start earning tombstones of poetics from first time bonuses and duty roulettes, which you can use to buy end game content for each expansion. This can save you heaps of gil, so I would recommend buying these instead of using the marker board at level 50, 60, and 70. Just make sure you don't overcap on them because the limit is low. Secondly, your gear gets damaged as you use it. You can repair it in towns using a mender or you can repair it yourself using dark matter, but you have to have the required crafter skill for your gear type. You can see what skill you need and what dark matter level by hovering on your gear. Repairing it yourself gives you an extra 100% durability, so if you repair something at 99%, it'll go up to 199%. Now finally, because your class is tied to your weapon, you can be all of the classes on one character. Now this should make gear super annoying because you have all these different ones, but it isn't. Just use this awesome button on your menu and you will automatically equip the best gear for the weapon you have equipped. And if you vended your starter weapon for the class, you can just go buy it back from the market board or an arms vendor. So the last tip is read your abilities. This can be super easy to overlook or you think you know how they work, but you only really know it at a shallow level. Some abilities give additional effects just in the text, like on my ninja, I have a buff that reduces my weapon recast time by 15% and I didn't use it for a very long time. And there were also other abilities that were extending that duration and I was like, why would I use this one when I could use the other? Like, I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on. So that's just my experience with Ninja, but every other class would also have similar things. So make sure you read your tooltips. All of this information can be found there. Some abilities also have directionals, which means that you are doing more damage when you are standing in that position. Flank means that you're standing to the side, whereas rear means you're behind. 
Now targets do give a indicator of this. You can see the ring, the back of it is actually cut out and if you're standing in the cut out part that is the reel and if you're standing next to that then that's the flank so this is really helpful especially if you're playing something like monk which has a lot of directionals like you only really need to move back and forth one step so also your abilities combo together so you need to make sure you're reading what they combo with so that you can continue to do these and some combos are inside of other combos there is a lot going on you want to perform your abilities in this combo order and when you do the first ability the second will light up which makes it a little bit easier to know what's going on and finally, you want to be reading your passives. This can turn an ability that was previously never used into something that you use all the time. You can see all of your class abilities, passives, role abilities, and just general actions by clicking P and looking at there. Thanks for watching my video. If you did like it, please like and subscribe and put some comments down below of any feedback that you have. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps any new Final Fantasy players out there. Bye!